bodybuilding we got a special video today uh, I'm going to see mr. Ben Pikulski Ben Pikulski will be at Algonquin College today um, so we're gonna partake, partake in his um, strength and I guess scientific methods of training seminar okay so I'll see you at Algonquin that's our community college here first the nurse is going to take over that muscle may get some stimulus somewhere in the middle of the range well, chances are it's never going to be the strong of the extremes, it's never going to be built off of it. So if you learn one thing, and again, we're obviously going to talk about it as it applies to more body parts. Number two, maintain continuous tempo, which means maintain continuous motion. So you see a lot of people, now this is, can obviously be manipulated, but in, in general terms, it's really important that there's not a lot of to it because this might be kind of long um, six essentials to exercise execution I will be reading off my laptop um, because I, I had taken notes in the uh, seminar on my uh, on my blackberry so <clears throat> the six essentials to exercise execution according to Ben are focused muscle engagement I mean that's common sense so when we do an exercise we want to make sure the exercise is focusing on the muscle itself um, and we're engaging the uh, muscle which brings us to continuous motion and tension so we don't want to just kind of let go stop our set and no longer focus on muscle tension um, we want to make this a continuous motion as much as possible so that we can involve the muscle and we can make sure it's tense it's almost like doing um, I don't know if anyone's ever done uh, uh, squats where you put tension on the lower portion of the movement or the higher upper portion of the movement and this really kills you by you know just putting the tension there at a low weight so um, weight isn't always a necessity provided that there's uh, sufficient tension um, and continuous motion extreme range uh, stimulation so when he talks about the extreme range He's talking about the actual extreme of the range. So when you're, let's say bicep curl, your extreme would be fully extended, and I believe it's pronated, and then all the way up, right? Okay, so starting at the extreme would be the lower extreme. And I know that Ben stressed that, and I'll get into this later on his rules when we talk about range of motion, at the lowest end of the range is, or the beginning of the motion, the lowest end of the range, is when you're typically the weakest. So he has a curve, and he actually talks that this is the next point. Um, sorry, after maximal muscle shortening. So um, I came in late on the seminar, so I missed what he had said on maximal muscle shortening, but I'm assuming that's you know, getting the full range and making sure you're contracting the muscle itself and not, you know, like he used an example later in the seminar for lat pull downs. When you're pulling down your, um, your bar, you're not bringing the bar to you so pe people will swing into it. I've, I'm guilty as charged of doing this a couple times. You've seen in my videos, flexing in my abs and bringing the bar to me and pulling down. Well, you're essentially not shortening your muscle. You're not using the maximal muscle shortening at that point you're swinging into the bar you're using your chest to move forward into the bar and your muscle isn't shortening you're just cheating that bar to your chest so it's not getting the bar to the chest it's getting the full muscle shortening contraction you're getting your your back to go inwards like a ball uh, opposed to bringing this bar up where I can I don't even have to use my back to bring the bar to my chest really if I wanted to I could use my rear delts I could swing I could swing and use my abdominals and find tricks to get the um and that of course is what we call cheating uh, which I think <laughs> and I don't want to contradict Ben but uh, if you're using a maximal load and you just want to get a couple other little contractions near the end something Arnold used to do you can always cheat an exercise um, okay, so anyways, maximal muscle shortening. I think in a nutshell, you should really be able to focus on the range and, and not worry about the, um, sorry, I'm trying to get the color back, not worry about 
um, you know, cheating, or sorry, you should worry about um, what your muscle is doing. You should get the full contraction, the full shortening of the muscle. So, you know, like your bicep, shortening of the muscle. This would not be shortening of the muscle. Swinging your elbows uh, and your shoulder to support the weight. This would be a full contraction, you know. Um, anyways, you guys get the idea, I'm sure. Uh, strength curve. So I was talking about the strength curve. And that's when I was saying the lowest range of the motion is always the weakest. And Ben's saying, you know, cause for injury most of the time, I mean, other than dehydration and other factors, is when you're not strong enough to actually lift the weight at that range of the motion. So you're going to either get hurt here or here. Um, I think bench is a better uh, example because I did tear my pec and I have an extremely good mind-muscle connection with my chest. But um, even that day, I think I was pushing it. I ended up pushing, um, I think, 405 or 435 for, I mean, infinitesimal sets. I just kept going and going and going. I wasn't even counting. I think I was there for almost two hours. And uh, my muscles got weak. And at the weakest range of the motion, uh, where I was using heavy, heavy, well, heavy enough weight, not, not, but heavy weight over time, over repetition for me, I heard a little snap. Okay, so that was right around here. Not here, where I have a lot of strength. And um, he says the lowest range, but I've built a lot of strength for my bench there. I think you can train that low range to be uh, very strong and very effective. And if you do that, then you've got, and that's why I have a phenomenal chest, phenomenal bench. Um, squats, another story. I suck at that. I mean, uh, getting to the low range, getting up. It's terrible for me. So I did ask Ben about some tips on how to build legs. And he said, maybe squatting's not even for you. I mean, maybe machines are better. Um, but I'll maybe touch on that. I'm already at five minutes, so probably not. So optimal posture. Um, whatever you're lifting, you always want to sit. Like you're sitting straight. <clears throat> up. Chest up. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Computer locked. So chest up. And then... You perform your lift in optimal posture. Same thing with squatting. That's why, you know, chest up, squat. You want to be like you're sitting down straight at all times. So those are his six essential six essential rules to exercise execution, um, which I 100% agree with. Like I said, the cheating, you can integrate cheats. That's my philosophy. I like to throw weight around a bit. You've seen my videos. Um, but, you know, in theory... Ben probably would have less injuries and um, do it much more strategically than, than I do. I like to have fun in the gym, too. So a little bit of a Branch Warren, Johnny Jackson. And I know Ben hates Branch Warren, Johnny Jackson, um, their style of uh, lifting. Um, so I like a combination of both. But overall, in theory, um, Ben's methods or Ben's um, key pointers are, are probably the most effective. And definitely for a beginner who wants to, you know, build up their strength and build up their muscle size. Um, so training muscle groups, um, what he really wanted to focus on was uh, explaining that, uh, well, for, we went by, we went through all the different muscle groups and we went through the range of motions and which is the short end of the range, which is the long end of the range. So the short end of the range is, is best to train. Once you get to the middle, the strength is the highest. Um, and we are always weakest at the low end of the range, which, I, which I've already quoted. Um, research seems to indicate that we can train a muscle or a certain length of a muscle by focusing on one part of the range. Now, I think he was talking about fibers and extended fibers and you training those fibers. Um, now, I kind of missed that, so don't quote me on that one. Rule of thumb, when attempting to effectively train a muscle, one must always maintain proper posture. We've been over that. So the presentation will help the audience understand the essentials of ranges of motion for each body part. Okay. So full range of motion is typically external rotation from top of the range and internal rotation from bottom of the range. I hope I didn't invert those because I am dyslexic. Um, chest, and I'm not a kin major or I never took physiology courses, just psych courses, so you never know. <laughs> so re remember guys, when you're, when, you're, when you're listening to this, uh, maybe you wanna 
just double check um, or think it through. Um, but I, I do believe that's right, external rotation from top range and, and bottom range. We get a lot of training where I work about this because I work with people who have injuries, so um, the psych perspective, but uh, I get into this stuff too. Um, chest, misconception. So presses and flies, are they the same thing? Yes, they're the same range of motion is what Ben is saying. One just further extended. This is the same motion. You are typically using the same range. They're not two different exercises. Sorry, they are two different exercises. Let me requote. They're two different kind of ranges of motion. So I, when you go to the gym, I think what Ben is saying is that you have uh, a, a series of machines you use or a series of exercises you use. Every exercise caters to a different part of the full range of the motion or should. So if you're doing bicep, how are we going to get from down here to up here for full range? Um, of course, I'm screwing my elbows, so you don't want to do that. But Or chest, how are we going to get full range from here to here? Excuse me with the arms, right? And the elbows should really be out of the equation. It's just this. But how are we going to get to that full range? We're going to use different machines. We're going to use different exercises. I think back is probably the best example because we have a lot of ranges. Um, I mean, this is the same range as this. It's just how are we shortening the muscle? It's the same range. Are we shortening the muscle here or are we shortening the muscle there? Um, so another misconception he went through is for back is back pull down versus back uh, rows for thickness or, or width. And I've heard this, I've heard this from an IFBB pro before, um, who I really respect. Um, I don't work with him personally. He's from the Toronto region. He's a nice guy. Um, but he told me, no, 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 you got to quit doing pull downs. You're just working your width. You're not working your thickness. You need to do rows for thickness. Um, this is a clear misconception. It's an old misconception. Uh, if you want thickness, you're working it regardless if you're pulling, according to Ben. Um, thickness is just part of the same animal, um, whereas width just comes with the exercise. So I may have misquoted and said that in my videos as well because I've been told that many a time by people. Um, but no, there's no difference between pulling and and. and and pulling inwards for thickness. It is a different range of the muscle. This will really target your rhomboids in your lower back, and I think I've said that, because it's, it's, this is the bottom range. Or, excuse me, this is the top range, I guess, is what it would be. This would be the bottom range. This would be the top range pulling. So, you're doing an exercise like this, top to mid, mid to bottom. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So, chest, um, Full range, oh, you know, this is not pertinent to chest, or this is this does not pertain to chest, but every exercise. He said that full range is not needed in every exercise, but as we integrate different exercises together, we are expected to hit the full range of motion within our workout. Um, and that's something I had explained, right? Um, okay, so bicep, full range of bicep, pronated from bottom supinated to top range, um, back, lat, um, the lat dorsi to teres major are all connected to the scapula, and um, scapula, excuse me, um, misconception, uh, it's inaccurate to say a pull down is for width, and we talked about that, so it retracts the scapula, it retracts, okay, that's why your, your, your shoulders are positioned different when your posture is different, right? Maximal posture, back to maximal posture again. Um, leg extensions. Uh, so primary focus of leg, leg extension is to train the short end of the range. Now this is important for me because I have trouble with squatting heavy weight. So I think the leg extensions, especially pre-exhausting, would really help me. Um, the joint with the greatest amount of execution, mm, excursion, I think I meant uh, the spell check probably, the, the joint with the greatest amount of excursion, yeah, it may be excursion, knowing the amount of travel if the joint saves the muscle, yeah, we're going to take that sentence out, I think he's saying, um, 
the joint with the greatest amount of travel. Uh, no, I have no idea what I had written there. Spellcheck totally took over and, and, and messed that whole thing up, and I can't remember. Sorry, guys. Um, that's about it for ranges that I went over. I mean, I was taking notes. It was about a 40-minute lecture on the ranges. Um, a lot of it was example, where he brought people up on stage and showed us examples of the range. Well done. I can't do that in this video. I didn't take any videos of that. I didn't want to want to step on Ben's toes. Um, I think it would have been a little, um, uh, I think it would have been a little bit uh, rude uh, to take these videos um, without his permission and I came in too late to ask him so I took a couple quick videos but um, nothing that would, you know, divulge any of, uh, you know, his, how he delivers his material and like I said, if I could have asked him then maybe we would have gotten more but um, what we have is what we have. Um, so talking about overtraining and this is uh, something I've spoken to in my videos and something I think is bang on in all my videos is overtraining a myth Ben's take and I quoting this the only way to grow is to grow or go to extremes so Mr. Pakulski says overreach so that the muscle is forced to adapt and grow then rest so overreach don't overtrain I think was his big quote but he says it's all relative because, you know, there's nutrition's a factor. Can you train more if your nutrition's on point? Um, yes, you, you certainly can. And uh, overtraining, he says it here, overtraining is a question of nutrition. It's also all relative. Training depends on your nutrition. Um, redundancy. Um, how much protein do you need? And this, is, this surprised me when he talked about this, and I, I kind of like this answer. He said... You know, you can correlate all the, or you can you can look at all these studies, and there's a correlation between how much protein this athlete needs and that athlete needs. But these athletes aren't you. These athletes are average people. These are you know people that gain maybe six pounds of lean body mass after going through a minor mis uh, uh, like a minor recomposition uh, after just starting the gym. So research is very generalized and broad. Okay, it doesn't take in specifics of your needs, your physiology, and your training requirements. So, um, how much protein do you need? He says it's a very subjective thing, and um, that's one of the smartest things I've I heard. Not that the other things weren't; they were all very intelligent things that he had said. But um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, especially the research. It really doesn't speak to how much protein we need. We really got to play it by ear a little bit here. Um, eccentric versus concentric and he gives an example eccentric versus concentric training eccentric training requires more protein versus concentric training which needs more carbs so smart meal planning can also be used to work around uh, or to help us strategize and you know in a nutshell that was Ben's um, whole premise do this be a more intelligent bodybuilder um, be more scientific in your approach don't waste your time when you go to the gym, don't just throw weights around. Think about what you're doing. Think about the contraction. Think about the range of motion. Um, think about the tension applied. And um, and those are only three principles. Uh, God, I, I forget the other three right now. Um, <clears throat> but they're they're they all work in unison, really. So everything he does is is talking about unison of you know one full exercise or one full workout. Really, when you boil it, when you bring it down to uh, at the at the end of the day when you. When you look at the big picture, it's all about, you know, what did you get in that workout? And it, it is the full range um, and with uh, proper form. Um, okay, so that's about it. So thank you very much, guys, for listening, and I hope you took something from this. Uh, I hope it wasn't too boring and long, and I hope the presentation was streamlined enough. So uh, needless to say, I have some pictures of Ben, and we have some short videos, and that's it. All right, kind of a big deal, 613 Bodybuilding. Lucky to have Ben Pakulski in Ottawa. And you guys, uh, FYI, I am uh, in the works, something with Gorilla Wear. Um, we are going to announce my ambassadorship uh, to Ottawa. So if you guys have any uh, Gorilla Wear uh, related questions, look at my hat here, where to get it, um, what to do in terms of uh, internet orders. I don't know if I'll have a promo code. We'll go through all that later um, in another video, but um, just an FYI, if you go to Gorilla Wear on, on, uh, 
on uh, Facebook, Guerrillaware Canada. You'll see uh, we're releasing it this week, and there's right now they have a. I won the Guerrillaware uh, trophy, so we got a couple of. Uh, for the heavyweights uh, class was sponsored by Guerrillaware. So we got a couple things going on there with me and um, Chris Wong. Uh, okay, anyways, that's it. So 613bodybuilder.com, kind of a big deal. Peace. So we're just at the seminar. Uh, you guys met Big Turk. He's just meeting Ben. And still extend that one set for a tremendous amount of time using the same way, just by changing the angle of the bench, changing your body's ability to move the bench and assist.